blood, wood, and fire. What do these things have in common for women? What do these things mean for women? It sounds like a Game of Thrones episode, but today we're going to be talking about how these three things are really important in women's health, women's physiology, and what happens when these things go out of balance and how does it affect us? I'm Murray Hopkinson. I'm a Chinese herbalist and an acupuncturist coming at you from Perth, Western Australia, all the way into your... <laughs> your television screen, I wanted to say, into your lounge room or your your small little phone, wherever you're watching me, hello. <laughs> um, so welcome to the channel. And today I wanna to talk specifically um, about women's physiology, women's health, um, but this is also relevant if you're a man and you're thinking about um, how do I understand my partner <laughs> um, in a Chinese medicine way, if that's a help for you, you might find this interesting. And also, you know, if you're just interested in learning about Chinese medicine, of course, like if you're a practitioner, then half of your patients are probably women, if, if not more. Um, and also just if you're, um, I don't know, watching this, <laughs> welcome. Uh, so we're going to need to use the five element little board that I've got today because we're going to talk about um, wood and fire, these two elements, how these two interact for women's health, especially in blood. Now. We could talk all day about how women's health, it's not just um, one, one of those elements, let's just say. It's not just one or two. It's not just those two that have effects for women. But they're very common um, to cause some of the pathologies that we see. So just a little disclaimer, these are not, this is not the only pathologies that women have. It's not the only elements that are involved. You might be thinking, oh, but what about water, Marie? What about earth? Yes, they're all involved. And, but we're going to just focus on these two for today, wood and fire. Um, wood fire and blood. So what do these th t two things have in relationship with blood? Well, wood is the element that relates to your liver and your gallbladder. So particularly for this topic, we're going to be talking about the yin aspect of wood, which is the liver. Now, one of the functions of the liver in TCM is that it's said to store blood. So what do we mean by that? It means that when you go to sleep at night, the blood of your body returns to your liver um, or when you lie down flat even, so this can happen when you're you know, having a nap in the day. And so that you don't, you, you don't need blood in your limbs as much when you're sleeping. So your, your blood's being rejuvenated and being restored. Now what that's really meaning is like how in Western medicine they say, well, the liver filters blood. So it filters out the toxins out of our body. So in a way it's involved in a, a type of digestion, right? Not digestion of food, but this filtration and removal of toxins. And so like this rejuvenation. So <laughs> When we wake up in the morning, we're all fresh and ready to go again, hopefully. Um, now, women's physiology relies heavily or um, drains heavily on blood, let's say, because um, it's just how we are. <laughs> There's differences, um, um, you, know, uh, you know, contrary to popular belief <laughs> for some, there are differences between men and women. There are differences between the physiologies. So I'm not talking about whether people identify as a woman or something like that. I'm talking about the physiology that you have fundamentally as a female with a uterus. The fact that you have a uterus means that you're going to lose blood every month or periodically, right? And so that means that your, your body is one is constantly producing more blood. And so it, it, there's a saying in TCN that says that like, you know, women get more blood deficient, men get more yang deficient. So there, there, there's always exceptions to the rules. You know, these aren't the 100% rules, but this is the general physiology of what happens. So when this goes haywire, like when it's not working properly, that's when we can kind of see these um, patterns of disharmony that happen. But there's also things that happen in normal physiology where we can just look after ourselves better, knowing that it's going to happen, right? So most women know when they're having their menstrual period time, it's like, you know, a time to kind of look after yourself and not sort of stress yourself. Like... Most women I know, they're not going to try to run a marathon, especially if they don't run a marathon every day. You know, when they're having their period time, they want to kind of have a bit of a rest time on that time. And that's not a bad thing to, to, to have to do because what's happening is your body's, it's losing blood, which means it's losing heat from you. It's losing your own body's yang. Now, it's not normal with a menstrual period for you to feel exhausted, like I've got to lie down, I can't cope with my day, I can't go to work. Um, you know, things that are abnormal could be including like things like e e extreme pain, um, a little bit of discomfort is considered normal or okay, but like not, not pain where you need to take painkillers or pain where you have to take time off work. It could be, you know, pain in your, in your abdomen or your lower back. Um, it could be e extreme breast distension, like pain or, um, you know, uh, a feeling of heaviness in your breasts before 
just before or during the period that can be common it's not normal but it can be can happen so these are all things that can often be relating to wood or they do relate to the wood element but they also relate to the pattern of disharmony and tesium called liver chi stagnation so the wood element likes to as well as store blood um, in the night time um, and rejuvenate your blood it, the wood element is also relating to this movement this movement of chi now I've talked about this on other videos where I've talked about liver chi stagnation and you know three things you can do to move liver chi and how you might notice if you've got liver chi stagnation that you tend to have a lot of sighing <sighs> like that you know those kinds of things now that can all be related to PMS premenstrual syn syndrome or premenstrual tension PMT same same thing just different names um, and for some women, they feel like, okay, this is just a little bit and it's just, I feel a bit narky or I feel a bit angry or I feel a bit, you know, not great, but they're not, you know, very angry. They're not very depressed or they're not, you know, very, those emotions aren't extreme. And so what's happening there is your wood is having a reaction or an action on the fire. So wood has to generate fire. The emotion of wood is anger, frustration, resentment those emotions right they're all similar kinds of things the emotion of fire is joy <laughs> and it's a very soft thing so you know sometimes we think of fire we think oh fire raging fire but it's actually fire is very soft right you can actually i mean if you go very quickly put your hand through fire you can't fire is is very non-substantial right it's very powerful it but it's not it's not like um you know this hard kind of container right it's less substantial than that so it's very soft and in its pure nature fire a fire element type of person a personality of fire it's very bubbly very happy you know just smiley and you know sometimes people can even be too happy and seem like wow I'm just so happy and you're like what what's wrong with you <laughs> like I'm just so so bubbly well that's that's an exuberance of fire like that's that's a fire type of person and all different we all have different personality types and things like that but what can happen when you have a, a, a stagnation of or an issue with wood let's say so either a stagnation of liver chi people do that they get sighing they get you know and sometimes it become almost like a choo choo train <laughs> like like <laughs> get really angry and that can like affect fire in terms of like the anger is almost taking away their joy their ability to feel joy um, or it, like it's just overpowering it so it's exerting you know the energy onto that and that person can't control so when you have anger you don't really have joy in that like think about it when you're really really angry a lot of people feel regret that they're even angry sometimes afterwards or they feel like you know I just can't I just they're not you know anger isn't something that exists usually in the presence of happiness at the same time um, righteous anger is kind of like maybe you might feel a relief that hey i'm going to do something about this and i'm i've got this power behind me of this angst because i'm angry about a cause or you know i'm going to do something about that but pure frustration anger resentment kind of anger in a negative sense can't be kind of coexist with that fire it's almost like it cancels it out the fire is in i mean the joy so that's one thing that can happen. It really commonly women notice this around their menstrual period time because the week before your cycle, and I've also I've done another video just on the cycle about this, is the time where you need that wood to be moving, right? You need wood as in you need chi to move blood so that the blood can flow, the blood can move in the cycle, in the menstrual cycle. So what can happen is in that premenstrual time is that chi stagnation is kind of building up and people get angry and frustrated and you know, and that can lead to feeling not great because they get a lack of joy but also what can happen is there can sometimes be a lack of wood like a lack of movement and so therefore their period doesn't come regularly it might come at different weird times like early or late but it also um, may not come at all and sometimes people can feel like there's a lack of drive in their life you know so this is where you might feel like purposelessness <laughs> um, try to say that quickly purposelessness um, so passion and purpose life planning tends to be a wood element type of thing right feeling like this is where I'm going my life direction so a feeling of aimlessness 
And then that lack of wood to generate fire can sometimes mean that the person feels a lack of joy, which is nothing, right? They feel uh, what's sometimes called in textbooks a flat effect, which is like, I just don't feel anything. I don't feel, you know, this can happen in depression where people feel nothing. They just don't feel angry about something. They don't feel good about something. They don't know what they want to do. They don't feel any inclination to do anything. They might feel like, oh, people have told me exercise might help me or, you know, if I got out of the house and went and visited someone or something like that, they won't have any inclination to do those things. And they certainly would feel very, like it's very hard to feel a sense of joy. And then you also have a lack of joy leading to sadness, right? So you can have like the fire element, let's say, in its proper functionings, giving you joy, a sense of happiness. Now, not over joy, like everything's happy all the time. That's un impossible. <laughs> but you feel a sense of happiness in general. Like, you, okay, things can happen, but you know that life is going to be okay. And you kind of feel a sense of, of, of happiness. And, and at different times of the day, you'd be able to feel happy about certain things. Um, then you can have that lack of joy, which is what we were talking about before, where it's just flatness, kind of nothing. And then you can have even um, a further depletion of joy in a way that gives you a sadness. So sadness itself is a metal element emotion. Um, so, you know, a deep sadness, like, you know, you've, sadness and grief is definitely a metal kind of thing. So I'm not so, sort of much talking about about that it's more just this lack of joy and so even those people because they're flat they might not even feel sad they just feel nothing right so just that that's where that can can kind of relate to so you might say oh that's all well and good Marie but how do I fix it <laughs> what does that mean so a, an acupuncturist or a Chinese herbalist can help you with these things and that's how they would know how to intervene so part of me making these videos is to kind of explain well this is how Chinese medicine works how amazing is it? How wonderful is it? And these are some of the things where acupuncturists can kind of have like, um, you know, these, um, I don't know, more emotional effects on your body. Like, you know, these, these effects by treating this physiology, then we're fixing the emotional stuff, right? There's no, it's not like an a point that you're fixing, oh, you press this point, this makes you happy. Now, there are some points on your hands that you can use um, for these kinds of things. So one of the channels I'd recommend you use for these two aspects is the pericardium channel because without getting into too much detail the pericardium channel has a link to wood because it's a jui yin channel that probably means nothing to you but um it means a lot to me <laughs> um so wood liver like liver is a jui yin channel and pericardium is a jui yin channel pericardium is also a fire relates to the fire element and it's a jui yin channel so the pericardium is the sac around the heart Yep, so in physiology, it's a physical thing. It's actually a thing. Now, if you get injured by a virus or um, a pathogen or bacteria particularly, like that might attack your heart, it's very uncommon because your heart is like the, you know, the center of your, what's literally in the center of your chest, but everything in your body is kind of protecting that because that's the one organ that if it fails or anything happens to it, you'll, you'll, you'll die. So your body is naturally designed in a way, you can see how it's designed to kind of protect that from pathogens, right? But if that were to happen, then it usually goes to the pericardium before the heart. The, that's why in um, one uh, translation, the pericardium is translated as the heart protector, right? Just that's what it's called, the heart protector. Isn't it cool that we have a little heart protector? So in Chinese medicine, they think the heart, in some, some schools of Chinese medicine, in acupuncture, they think never, needle the heart channel right? don't disturb the emperor the emperor is the you know the the one that you don't disturb you just go around him <laughs> to the pericardium and treat that first and so that would be the best way to kind of think about it so y your the pericardium channel comes down the middle of your hand and it comes up to the this part here between your two fingers just there so if you have a lot of kind of anxiety and and like uh Floss, feeling flustered and restless and that kind of stuff then these points on the hand and here are the best ones to use but if you come down a little bit further so this one's called pericardium six and it's like two fingers slightly spaced apart from your wrist crease just in here in between two tendons and that's a very common point to use for like helping the uterus um like it's used in combination with a point on the on the foot a spleen point 
Um, so your acupuncturist will be able to use these points on you, but you can press them on your press them kind of on yourself. And that pericardium six is the one that's used for nausea, like um, seasickness. It's often used on those seasickness bands and things like that. So there's some things you can kind of do. Um, definitely moving that liver chi before your cycle is a good thing to do. So um, you want to make sure you have plenty of like regular exercise, not strenuous exercise, but just you know keeping your body moving and stretching and yoga and um, just going for a walk around the block. That kind of stuff is good. If you're feeling like the stagnation is building up to the point of getting angry or frustrated, then go for a walk. Like those are good things to kind of do. <sighs> Breathing exercises, like things that allow your arms to kind of move like tai chi exercises and things like that but also the wim hof breathing method i find that that's quite useful to kind of get that air moving through your diaphragm and helping relax that liver chi <laughs> stagnation those are good there's a thing called the five tibetan rites which is like a uh an exercise thing you can do you can look up look up that on youtube that's a good one to do for moving liver chi um, foods that are good can be pungent foods so a little bit of like, um, maybe not so much chili hot, but like ginger, coriander, cinnamon, um, basil, that kind of stuff, like lemongrass, those kind of foods are good to kind of move. And if you're in a winter season, then you can have the kind of the curries and the heavier foods. Otherwise, just have those things as part of like, you know, if you're having some spring rolls or some chicken or something like that that's cooked, maybe with a salad or something like that, then have some of these more pungent spices kind of in the mix of it that kind of helps your wood element um, the food that helps your your heart is actually sweet like the sweet flavor relaxes your your heart when i say your heart we mean your mind like your mental health right <laughs> now you don't want to have sugar too much sugar but this is why people feel good from it so you could have a little bit of honey um have some honey in your tea just you know I um, mean, a little bit of chocolate here or there, especially dark chocolate's not such a bad thing for the dark chocolate's not a bad thing for that. For that, the problem with sugar is once you go down that sugar train, it's really hard to get off it. Like it's hard to um, like not have as you know your your body kind of wants more and more. But, but like a little bit of it, if you can have it in moderation, and certainly like honey, maple syrup, you know, used in cooking, that kind of stuff could be useful at some times. And carbohydrate foods you know, are comforting kinds of foods for that reason. So that's what that's what that's what those things do. Now I'm not saying you should just stuff your face full of them, but those are kinds of some of the things you can try um, at different times, you know, to kind of help, you know, treat these things with, with foods <laughs> at the time of when they're appropriate. So um, those things and the last one that I want to mention is sleep. Like sleep is really important for blood. Um, so we're talking about blood wood and fire <laughs> and if you want to nourish blood it's sleep is really important and also checking with your practitioner about a strategy to kind of help make sure your cycle isn't too heavy or if you're having a lot of heavy periods um, or bleeding that won't stop or things like that then um, that's wasting blood it's your body's producing blood you know so sometimes you do need to take a pragmatic approach and go to a gp and have something done we're in, we're in western medicine I'm not saying have a hysterectomy or something but like it, some in some cases that's like going on the pill or something like that or using a contraceptive device you know may be appropriate if chinese medicine hasn't worked so far like so if you haven't tried acupuncture and chinese herbs then you know you could give that a try um there's certainly i've i've had lots of um you know patients that have had uh, that conundrum that they face like should I go and do this or should I have do it natural now if they're coming to me the first time they've never tried a herbs or acupuncture first then it's probably warranted to try that for a while but it's what I've had to say to people as well is like you know at the end of the day if you keep on having this heavy bleeding that's not good for you either so sometimes you have to take a pragmatic kind of approach to it so um, I'll do my best as a practitioner to try to help people naturally but that's important to understand that like having a lot of blood loss isn't good for you you know either so they're the they're the kinds of things you want to think about with with blood and then finally with blood also meat <laughs> and vegetarianism so if you are a vegan then you want to make sure that you have plenty of cooked foods and not too much raw because that can be super detrimental like being a raw vegan is more detrimental than just being a vegan to blood because it means your body's like working harder to digest everything but you could still um 
do okay being a vegetarian if you have things like eggs um, royal jelly is another thing that's like a blood tonic food um, and purple foods like I've got other videos just on blood tonic kind of food so you could go and watch those sort of things um, yeah and look meats aren't designed or aren't, aren't encouraged to have like tons of meat it's just you would maybe have meat in your diet and certainly have it more after you've had a period or after you've had a birth right so what else is going on for wooden fire with for women in their lives not not just having periods but possibly having babies and so that's another aspect that kind of depletes blood and it depletes those things so uh, postpartum like that's the time after you've had a baby it's really important that you're you nourish blood and that you look after yourself and in Chinese culture they have this thing called a month of confinement which is where women don't go out um, they don't you know let family members kind of harass them <laughs> and sort of go outside and show off the baby and all this kind of stuff just to stay at home and for the mother to bond with the baby and the father as well but also to protect you from the wind and the the environment because one thing that happens in Chinese medicine is like when your blood's deficient you're very vulnerable to the wind you, your protective um, like armor against the wind is kind of a little bit chipped away because you don't have as stronger blood let's say as good quality blood is what we mean when we say not as stronger blood <laughs> when I was learning Chinese medicine I always used to wonder what that was my teachers would say oh you not you don't have strong blood like these Chinese teachers and they just because their English wasn't so great and I was like what do you mean not strong blood <laughs> like, what does that mean it means when they say blood deficiency or not strong blood it means like your um blood doesn't isn't as good a quality like you'll still have the same volume every person is going to make up the volume of blood with you know water and products that you eat and drink um so the water the fluid is is built up but the, the quality of the blood and it's also some can sometimes be because of the wood lacking the movement it's the ability of that blood to move out to the areas um, and that's what can sometimes cause you to get cold hands so cold hands and feet could either be a blood deficiency and like a cold blood kind of pattern or a, like a chi stagnation like not as not a not as much wood energy would chi to kind of move out so your body's keeping this area your torso area warm and sacrificing your hands and feet let's say to keep them less warm less profuse with that good nutritious blood because they're less important to you to keep to keep going right you know in a long-term kind of sense so I'm also running a course um, next year, 2022, and I'd love you to become part of the course. If you're interested in learning Chinese medicine a bit more, taking it a bit further, then that's what the course is about. So it'll be in heaps of heaps detail. There's a link in the description to this video below. I'd love you to come and be part of the course and to learn Chinese medicine with me. It's um, a three-part course. It's kind of a, a course that's between a YouTube video um, there's some stuff that I'd love to be able to teach people, but I just can't talk about it on YouTube because it's, there's, it's reckless to kind of explain something in a half way and not give you the full way of it. And there's also stuff that kind of builds and builds on the knowledge. So it won't be boring when you've heard, oh, Marie, I've already heard you talk about the wood and the, and the fire and like, <laughs> I'm sick of that old one. Um, so it'll be something new. It'll be, it'll be stuff and it'll be stuff that builds on culminatively each week. Um, there's different options for people, different time zone options, and there's also a replay option that you can do. So I would love to have you join me. Click the link below to find out more about that. Um, and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you're not a subscriber already, leave a note in the comments if you've got a question about Chinese medicine. I love to answer people's questions. And uh, hopefully this video has been helpful and useful to you, talking about women's health um, and the blood, wood and fire aspects of women's health. <laughs> Thank you.